I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm very excited. So today, we're like, tonight, or today, whenever you're watching this, you know, good morning, good evening, and good night if I, if I don't see you later. Um, Event Horizon. We're talking about Event Horizon. <laughs> <laughs> what was this about? Let falls a crew of astronauts sent on a rescue mission after a missing spaceship, the Event Horizon, spontaneously appears in orbit around Neptune, only to discover that a sinister force has come back with it. I have gone. I, I have never seen this before. I have, you know, I've seen some Paul W. S. Anderson's films, like say. Alien vs. Predator, I've seen some of the, um, Resident Evil movies. Um, you know, we say sometimes he can, when it comes to directing films, he can be hit, miss, you know, all that. I gotta say, this one where it's like, say, hit, and that, you know, it's just like, say, hmm, entertaining. Because there are some wacky moments, like, say, say when, uh, Samuel Schedule uh, Dr. William G. Billy Weir, Weir, um, he is, like, saying, like, say, okay, well, how does space, like, the like, crew's gonna say, so how does time, space travel work? How does, like, you know, interdimensional nonsense work? He's gonna like, say, let me take this porn mat, mat picture. A uh, attractive piece of paper represents space-time, and you want to get from point A here oh. to point B here. There. Now, what's the shortest distance between two points? A straight line. <laughs> Wrong. The shortest distance between two points is zero, and that's what the gateway does. It folds space so that point A and point B coexist in the same space and time. And then the spacecraft passes through the gateway, space returns to normal. Almost. And then, as I say, and I'm just saying that <laughs> it was fun. Um, a lot of people have like say, can like say compared this film to like say, um, like say what was the film, um, The Shining. I can see that. I can see that. Whether it was a sequence in which, um, like one of the characters, the character of Justin, when he's just like you know he ends up almost when he just you know like says, I'm done. And then he, um, and the rest of the crew saves him and all that. It kind of like say, okay, there's some moments where I was like, oh, wow. Okay, baby bear. I got him. I got him. Stand by, people. The effects from this film are still pretty good. The film I'd actually say this is more similar to is almost like, um, Hellraiser in space. Yes, I can say, like, say some things of it are similar to, um, The Shining, like, in whether someone has their premonitions, and they go, like, say, oh my gosh, like, and all that, they have them some freaky stuff that they're seeing and all that, and it's just, like, yeah, that's scary. And, but honestly, I do think there are some goofy moments, like, say, Lawrence Fishburne's uh, Miller's chair on his ship, like, it's, like, hanging from the ceiling, I'm just going, <laughs> like, that is some production value that I have never seen in a science fiction film, and it's just, like, say, I give you credit, and I am thankful that you went there, and you did that. Um, yeah, and I did like how, um, like, at sometimes there are some goofiness, like, say, whether it's, like, characters going, like, say, Oh shit! Like say suddenly the walls are oozing blood, and I'm just going to say, <laughs> "Okay, now you're just being silly with this." Um, and honestly, there are some ending of uh, like say there are some goofy moments, like say when um Lawrence Fishburne's character, like when he's going up against Sam Neill's character, and he's just going, "Okay, he's like about to kick some ass." But ever so often, like, he's just getting it handed right back at him. Like, like, Sam Neill's kitchen has, like, you know, like, he's suddenly become 
full pinhead minus eyes. The makeup on him looks great. But then he goes like say, he basically the ship ship almost flungs him out into outer space like he's Wabi Coyote or something. And <laughs> like then he goes like say, surprise, I have returned. The ship brought me back. I told you she won't let me leave. She won't let anyone leave. Did you really think you could destroy this ship? She's defied space and time. She's been to a place you couldn't possibly imagine. And he, at one point he's going, before he flungs his head into blood-soaked water, he goes, okay. And then he just goes, starts beating him with a pipe. <laughs> and have some funny lines i'm sorry you can tell how infectious i'm being right now i had fun with this i as but as the film ends um like say like everyone is okay everyone some folks have gotten out the ship um except two of our main characters i can know and then everyone goes like okay it's all a dream and like sam neil goes like say nope no it's not you're I am still here, I am still here, and you cannot get away. Because <laughs> he's just like, now he's like, has to make like a helmet on, he's like saying, nope, you cannot escape from my ship. No one escapes from my ship. And I'm just thinking, <laughs> his character, is he is having so much fun, it is honestly infectious. <laughs> and that's just how I feel about it. This is a fun movie. Take me! You take me, you leave them alone. No. There is no escape. The gateway is open. And you are all coming with me. If you have not had a chance to see it. Yes, sometimes like the gratuitous of violence that something some like say um Hellraiser can be like say like maybe it's too much, but I can understand why. But then again, like, it's only lips and pieces. Let me show you. <laughs> it's like only, like, say, like, one or two, like, less than ten seconds of like, shots of the bots when it comes to the torture stuff. But not bad. Pretty entertaining.